What is going on everyone? Are you sick of living in the city? Want to find a rural town, get a loan, buy some real estate? Who doesn't, right? Today we're looking at great rural towns in Oregon. This is the eighth video in this series. We did the entire United States to start things off. Then we did New Hampshire, Montana, Georgia, California, Colorado, and Tennessee. And so far, and here we are doing the Beaver State, Oregon. Oregon is an amazing state for people that love the outdoors and beer. This state has more breweries than just about any other state. It has a reputation for being a very liberal state, which is a little misleading. Yes, it does lean that way, but most of the towns in the state are kind of the opposite. It is just Portland, Salem, and Eugene. They have more people than the rest of the state combined, so they get all the voting power, so to speak. Oregon has more nice small towns than most states. Rural towns that are nice are a little bit different. They have a whole lot of beach towns in Oregon that are small towns, but they really wouldn't be considered rural towns. In all these videos, I explain that not all states have 10 good rural towns, and I don't want to waste your time with some places that are a bit of a reach and shouldn't be on the list. Oregon has seven. With the towns in this video, we're looking for that sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to any major city, it's easy on the crime rate, and it's not five hours away from a hospital or so far out in the sticks that you get horrible internet. Those things knocked a lot of small rural towns off this list. So if you're thinking I missed a really good rural town, I might have but chances are one of those things knocked it off the list. All right, let's take a look. Number seven, Union, Oregon. Union, Oregon is in the Oregon outback, almost in Idaho. Union was platted on November 11th, 1864 along the Oregon Trail, and this place is surrounded by farmland. And past the farmland, you have a bunch of hills. It's a nice place. I mean, as far as landscapes go. The town isn't the greatest, but it's a rural town. It sits about two and a half hours northwest of Boise and about four and a half hours east of Portland. It's about 22 minutes south of La Grande, Oregon, which is the biggest city around this area. Union is a great place to live if you retire on a budget or let's say you work from home and aren't killing it in the salary department. They don't have a bunch of jobs here and they do have some poverty issues, but not a bunch of crime, which is odd. Normally, poverty comes with a lot of crime. They got 2,100 residents living here and they have a crime rate that's 31% lower than the national average. They get a thumbs up for that. That's pretty good, especially for a place that got some poverty. This is a nice community. I mean, they have an adult craft night at Union Carnegie Public Library every single month. I was reading this thing while I was looking up a couple different towns one time, and some of them had craft nights at different places, like at the Elks Lodge or the whatever lodge, and a lot of them had in parentheses describing the night, no glitter. <laughs> Apparently, glitter is like this horrible thing in the crafting world. I don't know where Union's craft night stands on the glitter situation, but you should call ahead and if you're going to show up, especially if you got like a truckload of glitter and, you know, you want to spread the joy. When it comes to housing here, they don't have a lot for sale right now. Actually, they have one place for sale. It's really nothing you want. But around January and February, they sold some decent homes and they're normally around 200 to 250,000. That's it. Not bad. And they usually come with a quarter of an acre or something like that. You go outside of town, they have lots for sale where you can put your own house, maybe even get a motorhome, put it there, whatever you want to do. And those start off around 25,000 and go on up depending on the size. So uh, they get a thumbs up for real estate because it's pretty cheap. You just got to keep an eye out to see when something pops up if this is a place you're thinking about moving to. Their internet isn't the greatest. They get 100 Mbps from Spectrum, who covers 94% of the town. And if you look it up, I had to do some digging because it didn't seem right. They keep showing LeGrand has a gig internet from Spectrum and you know everyone else has great internet there. And no matter, even if you're looking for Union, they kind of tell you what's going on in LeGrand. So it's, it's a little deceiving. You got to dig. I did some digging and found out that, no, they only get about 100 Mbps in Union, which is decent. I mean, you could watch Netflix, play video games on that, whatever you need to do. But it's not one gig, which is kind of the standard these days. So they get a faded thumbs up for that one. It's not bad, just not great. When it comes to healthcare, they do have a clinic in town, but no major hospitals or anything like that. If you need that kind of action, you just got to go up to LeGrand, which is only about 15, 20 minutes away. So they get a thumbs up for healthcare. But Union is a nice little town. It's just in desperate need of some new blood that brings a little money to the town, whether it's you're retired or you work from home. It's a good place to live. Number six, Sisters, Oregon. Sisters, Oregon is uh, not a place for just sisters. That's a reference to some mountains that are nearby. Three Sisters is pretty close, and if you don't know what that is, that's a closely spaced volcanic peaks we have here in Oregon. Uh, they're part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, as they what they call it in the Cascade Range. Basically, it's three mountain peaks that are close together. 
Sisters is a great rural town that's on the pricey side. It has that resort mountain town feel you get in like Whitefish, Montana, Jackson, Wyoming, and maybe Truckee, California. Now, the town is pretty nice and it's decent. Great little downtown area, nice pubs, nice restaurants, things like that. But the outside of town is very rural. And it's a town that's gaining popularity with people like ex-athletes and celebrities looking for a getaway type place. If you want to buy some real estate here, your starting money is going to be around $450,000. That'll get you something in town, normal house, but it's a little expensive by most people's standards. This area goes all the way up, though. Uh, I mean, nice cabins with some property go for around two to three million dollars. So when it comes to real estate, they get a thumbs up just because they got a wide range of options for you. The population of Sisters is only 2,300 residents with a crime rate that sits about 48% lower than the national average. That is not bad. They get a big thumbs up for that one. When it comes to healthcare, they have some doctor's offices and some clinics that should be able to cover most everything you need. If you need anything past that, you're going to have to go down to Bend, which Sisters sits about 30 minutes north of Bend. And Bend has the full-blown hospital and everything you'd probably need. If what they got in Bend doesn't work for you, you have a very scenic two-hour ride to Eugene to the west. But with what they got in Sisters and what they got in Bend, they get a thumbs up for healthcare. When you get into internet in Sisters, you got Bend Broadband, which will give you a gift and they cover about 91% of the town. After that, they got CenturyLink DSL, which is about 20 Mbps, and that's 86% of Sisters. So they get a thumbs up for that. Sisters is definitely a place for people that like the outdoors. There is plenty to do here. If you could afford it, this is one of the better options you have in Oregon. Number five, Amity, Oregon. Amity is a town that was established between 1848 and 1849 by two brothers that came to Oregon via the Oregon Trail. Their names were Joseph and Ahio Watt. I think it's Ahio, A-H-I-O. Anyway, the two Watt brothers decided to start a town and call it Amity. Amity sits about 15 minutes south of McMinnville, Oregon, and about 30 minutes north of Salem. Amity's a cute little rural town with about 1,500 residents and a crime rate that's 42% lower than the national average. People don't do stupid stuff here. So they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate. When it comes to real estate, it's not a bad place to live. I mean, it's definitely not as expensive as Sisters, but it's a little bit more expensive than Union, Oregon. They have a couple different places for sale right now. One's like 420,000, the other one's about 250,000. Looking at stuff that they sold just last month and like in February and January, the average house here, a decent one's gonna run you about 275,000 to $325,000. Probably a little bit more because prices are going up currently, but somewhere in that neighborhood. This is not a bad place to live at all. Very nice community. When it comes to healthcare, they don't have anything that I could find in town, but you're only like 15 minutes away from McMinnville and they're going to have everything you need, like the Willamette Valley Medical Center. Anything past that, you got Salem right down the road about 30 minutes and they're going to have everything you need. So they get a thumbs up for healthcare. When it comes to housing, it's a pretty cheap place, so they get a thumbs up for that. When you look at the internet of Amity, you don't have any worries. They got Xfinity, which will give you a gig, and they cover about 75% of the town. After that, you have Ziply Fiber, which gives you about 120 megs, and they cover 84% of the town. They also have another one called Lycra, I believe it's called, but they have DSL and Fiber. They offer one gig, and they cover 99% of the town. So you're going to be able to find one of them that's going to be able to get you some good internet. So they get a big thumbs up for that one. I like any place that has multiple providers for internet. Years ago, I switched from Comcast to Frontier, and like three days into it, Frontier went down for four days, and I can't have that. So I called Comcast and re-signed up with them. But, you know, if you're in one of those towns that only has one provider, you're out of luck. You know, you're at their mercy. But Amity's in a perfect location where you're far enough away from McMinnville, not like McMinnville's a big city, but you're far enough away to where you could live a nice, peaceful life and still have McMinnville or Salem down the road in case you want to do something a little more interesting. Now, also, McMinnville has a college there, Linville University, in case you're uh, looking to further educate yourself or you got some kids that are going to college. McMinnville also has the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum, which is a really cool place. They got the Spruce Goose there and just any kind of flying machine you could think of. But that's not the best part. That is pretty cool. I like that. But right next door, they have a really cool indoor water park that you can go to whenever. So if you got kids or grandkids or whatever, you just head up the road to that. Number four, Oak Ridge, Oregon. 
Have you ever heard of Oak Ridge, Oregon? Unless you live in the area or you like to mountain bike or fish, you probably have never heard of Oak Ridge, Oregon. This is a great place to live if you like the outdoors, especially if you like fishing, like fly fishing and mountain biking and hiking. Great place to live. Oak Ridge sits on the Salmon Creek, uh, not too far from Hills Creek Lake or Hills Creek Reservoir. I've heard it called both. I think my friend Will from Herman's Outdoors has fished there before. I could be wrong. Uh, if I find that video, I'll leave a link down below. You guys fished most places in Oregon, so I wouldn't doubt he's been out that area. Oak Ridge has about 3,200 residents and their crime rate sits at 14% lower than the national average. So they get a thumbs up from that. It's not the best on this list, but it's still well below the national average. Not bad, Oak Ridge. And they got train tracks too. So normally when you got train tracks, you got some crime. They don't. When it comes to internet, they only get a faded thumbs up because they got CenturyLink that offers 100 Mbps to about 93% of the town. I'm sure downtown it's perfectly fine, but they have a lot of homes in the rural outskirts of town, and I'm sure a lot of them aren't really connected. They also have another one called Emerald Broadband that offers uh, fiber just to like 5% of the town and they offer one gig there. So they don't have the best options, but at least they got internet. Oh, and I guess Emerald also offers 125 Mbps to about 68% of the town. Still faded thumbs up. When it comes to healthcare, Oak Ridge does have like a couple medical clinics, nothing major. Anything you're going to need past that, you got that drive up to Eugene about an hour away. So they get a faded thumbs up for that. Not saying they're doing bad work in Oak Ridge. I'm sure the clinics do everything they can. I'm sure they're really good at their job. They're just kind of small which is to be expected. It's a small rural town. When it comes to real estate in Oak Ridge, they're kind of all over the map. Houses start off around $220,000, which are decent, livable, and they go all the way up to 500, 600,000. And that's normally a nice cabin on a creek with like an acre of land or something. So they get a thumbs up from that because they got some pretty nice places for a relatively affordable price. But Oak Ridge is a bit out in the sticks. So if that's not your thing, you might want to overlook them. It's a beautiful place to live though. Number three, Prescott, Oregon, or if you're in uh, Arizona, it's Prescott. Prescott, Oregon is one of the smaller places you're going to find on any list I ever do. It's almost not even a town, but it's close to my house. I like it there, and I've actually looked at property there. Prescott only has about 50 people living there, and it sits about an hour north up the Columbia River from Portland, Oregon. Prescott's one of those like hidden places that the locals really don't want you to know about. And here I am blowing the whistle on them. They don't have anything, no amenities, no stores, no gas stations, nothing like that. But Longview is right up the road in case you do need anything. Longview, Washington's right across the bridge, like 15 minutes away. So it's not terrible. This one's just a nice, quiet little community. Prescott's one of those towns that you want to keep your eye on if this is something you're thinking about because houses don't pop up too often. When they do, they're a reasonable rate. In the last couple of years, they've sold some homes for $290,000 and $275,000. Right now, they have one place going for $285,000. You know, you just got to keep an eye on it if you're thinking about moving there. The other day, I had a guy email me and go, why do you keep bringing it up if nothing's for sale? I'm all, well, things pop up all the time. He's all, but nothing right now. So I had to go into detail with him that anyone watching a video, if I've given Given them the idea of moving someplace, they're going to do some research, they're going to look into it, and they might move there in a year or two. Real estate changes in a year or two. Houses go on the market, houses come off the market. This is just giving you an idea. Anyway, the real estate in Prescott gets a thumbs up because it's affordable, it's right on the river, and it's a nice community. When it comes to internet, they get kind of a faded thumbs up. It's a small community, so no one's really put a bunch of effort into getting internet there. So you got CenturyLink DSL that offers maximum speed of 100 Mbps. And uh, they also have AT&T, but that's not the best there. When it comes to healthcare, they've got nothing in town, but Longview, like I said, is right there. And they've got, you know, Peace and Health Medical Center. They got a Kaiser place there. They've got pretty much anything you need medical wise is going to be in Longview. And that's like 15 minutes away or less. Anything major, you're going to go down to Portland. That's only an hour away. So they get a thumbs up for that. Obviously, they're not going to have anything in town. There's only like 30 or 50 people living in the whole town. Number two, Vernonia, Oregon. I love Vernonia. I've actually talked about it on this channel before. I've tried to convince my wife to move to Vernonia a couple times. My friend Stacy used to live there. I think she lives near me now. Anyway, I used to work with her at Nike. She lived there. She loved it. It's a great little town. I've been there. They got a river running through town or a creek, whatever. And it's really neat. They have like a public swimming pool where they have lifeguards put out by the town and all that. And it's right off the river. They just kind of flow some uh, water into this area. And it's a swimming area. 
It's pretty cool. Vernonia has about 1,900 residents living there, and they've got a crime rate that's 63% lower than the national average. That's outstanding. Good job, Vernonia. Even though Vernonia is out in the sticks, they still have some things that you'd need. They have a Napa Auto Parts. They have a Subway. They have a couple different restaurants. Uh, their store, I had a friend that grew up there, and she said the store kind of sucks because they're so far out in the sticks, everything's almost like double in price, so that kind of sucks. But like I said, it's got a nice downtown little bridge that goes right over Rock Creek. The Nehalem River is not too far away. And I do know for a fact that Will from Herman's Outdoors goes and fishes there all the time. Now, they also have this other really cool thing. It's a bike path that's, you know, it's cemented or whatever, uh, it's asphalt. And it goes all the way from Banks to Vernonia. And the trail is beautiful. And it's a good distance. It's a 20 mile bike ride. Now, it's not like off roading. You're not mountain bike or anything like that. It's a nice path. It's pretty cool. Vernonia sits about 24 minutes away from Banks, which is a medium sized town. And like Prescott, it's about an hour away from Portland, Oregon. When it comes to healthcare, they have like a family practice in town. Anything past that, you can go to banks, but more than likely you'll end up like in Hillsboro, which isn't too far from my house. It's about 45 minutes away from Vernonia. So they get a big thumbs up for that. I like Vernonia because it's a good size rural town that you wouldn't expect it to be there. I mean, you go out into the farmland and things are kind of sparsely populated. Then you kind of go out into the hills. Then you get to Vernonia and Vernonia's way out there by itself. It's kind of big for being that far away from everything else. It's kind of strange. When it comes to internet, they have CenturyLink out there. It doesn't cover too much of the town. They also have a thing called Coho Net, which offers 100 megabits per second, and they cover about 99% of the town. They also have Ziply Fiber, which is rolling out there that offers five gigs. Yeah, but they only cover about 10% of the town right now. So they get a thumbs up for internet. If Ziply does get the five gigs out there more than just 10% of the town, they'll get a giant thumbs up next time around, I'm sure. When it comes to real estate, Vernonia is a pretty good place. I mean, they're all over the map. Starting off money is going to be somewhere around $250,000 and the house is going to need a little work. But then you get up to about $300,000 and you're going to get a decent place. The highest they got going right now is a really good looking suburban type home. Three bedroom, two bath for $400,000. If you got a cool million floating around, they got 10 acres for sale that's right on the edge of town. So they get a thumbs up for their real estate. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. We would really like it if you went over there, watched some videos, give some big thumbs up. Remember, giving videos a big thumbs up, it doesn't cost you anything, but it does help out the channel. This one included, not just On This Day. All right, on to number one. And number one, Carlton, Oregon. Carlton, Oregon isn't too terribly far from where I live also. Carlton is definitely a rural town. I mean, it's got farmland for as far as the eye can see. As long as you don't look south. I mean, to the south, you got McMinnville, and that's about 15 minutes away. Probably a little less. This is a nice place to live if you like wine and you like creeks. There's creeks everywhere around here, and the only thing that outnumber the creeks are the wineries. They're all around this area. This is some of the best wine country in the nation right here. This is like a wine town. In town, there's like 20 wine restaurants or winery type places that are associated with some kind of vineyard, which is usually just on the outside of town where they have a ton of them. Look at these pictures. This is the map. It's insane. But the Willamette Valley is known for its wine, and this is part of it. So if you're looking for wine, fishing, and a cute small town, Carlton may be the town for you. It's a really nice place. Like Vernonia, they only have 1,900 residents and a crime rate that's 38% lower than the national average. So they get a thumbs up for that. When it comes to real estate here, they don't have much to offer right now. Matter of fact, they have one place. It's going for like $500,000 and it's a couple acres and it's just outside of town. But since December of last year, they've sold quite a few homes in this area and they normally go for around $385,000 to $485,000, somewhere in that area. Just right now, they don't have a lot to offer. So they get a thumbs up because I think their low inventory is very temporary. As I just did this one, I marked Carlton down as one of the towns I'm going to go visit this summer. So you can be expecting a wine filled video. When it comes to internet, that's not a problem here. About 80% of the town is covered by Xfinity with one gig, a little over gig, actually 1.2. And then they got CenturyLink that covers 91% of the town with 100 megabytes per second. And Ziply is another one that's just going into the town there. They're offering 25 on DSL and they cover about 15% of the town. So they get a big thumbs up for internet. When it comes to healthcare, they got a small clinic in town. And then outside of that, you go down to McMidville, like I said, less than 15 minutes away and they're gonna have everything you need. So they get a thumbs up for their healthcare. 
All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, be nice to each other.